Chapter 24 the, They match? Delia gasped. But that's impossible. She took a deep breath, tried to force herself to stay calm. Sounding panicked would only make things worse. It would only make her appear more guilty. She could feel sweat dripping down her forehead. She grabbed a napkin off the table and blotted it away. She studied the photos. Yes, her lips and the lip print were definitely identical. No mistaking that. It doesn't make any sense, Delia insisted. I'm telling you, I didn't kill Vincent. Why would I kiss him and then kill him? You tell us, Detective Bender replied sharply. His voice held a new coldness. Detective Jameson flips through the pages of his little spiral notebook, reviewing his notes. Delia shredded the paper napkin between her fingers. Then she reached for another. How can I convince them, she thought. How? She ripped up another napkin and let the shreds fall to the table. Detective Bender heaved himself out of the chair and leaned across the table. The lips match perfectly, he told her. Pictures don't lie. Why don't you tell us? No, Detective Jameson interrupted him. He gazed at Delia sternly. Don't say another word. Not until your parents get an attorney here. Delia snatched another napkin from the pile on the table. She didn't shred it. She crumpled it into a ball and held it in her clenched hand. Stay calm, she ordered herself. You must stay calm. She crossed over to the bulletin board. The photo of Vincent's cheek made her eyes sting with tears. How many times has she seen him with a midnight wine lip print on his face? We had so many good times together, she thought. Hanging out in a burger barn after school, dancing close at red heat, snuggling on the couch in his family room. She swallowed hard and turned her attention to the other photo, the one of her own lips. They are a perfect match, she murmured. She gazed at the lip print on Vincent's cheek, then at her own lips, back and forth, back and forth. The lip print, her lips. She gazed back and forth between the photos. Then she spun around and faced the detectives. Those aren't my lip prints on Vincent's face, Delia exclaimed, and I can prove it. Chapter 25 Detective Bender's eyes went wide. He glanced at his partner, then turned back to Delia. Delia allowed a smile to spread over her face. I'm innocent, and I can prove it. I can prove it. Detective Jameson ran his hand over his bony jaw. Go ahead, he urged softly. Delia spun back around to face the board. My lips and the lip print do match, but they shouldn't. Detective Bender appeared totally confused, but Detective Jameson didn't. He narrowed his eyes and studied the photos. Keep going, he instructed. If I kiss Vincent, she explained, the lip print on his cheek wouldn't appear the way my lips do in the photo. The print would be reversed. Huh, Detective Bender grunted. Delia hurried around the table and picked up her purse. She rummaged through and found her new tube of midnight wine. She carefully applied a coat to her lips. Then she pulled out a scrap of paper. She kissed it and held it up to the detectives. If I kiss somebody, this is what the print would look like. Delia held the paper up beside her lips. See, my lips and the lip print don't match, do they? The print is reversed on the paper. Detective Bender now appeared as interested as Detective Jameson. Delia spread another coat of midnight wine on her lips. She picked up a clean, smooth napkin from the table. Then she blotted her lips and showed the detectives the print left on the napkin. The print on the napkin is turned around too, exactly like the one on the scrap of paper. See? She showed them the napkin. But if the print on the napkin is pressed against something flat, like someone's cheek... Delia flattened the napkin against the top of the table. This has to work, she thought. She slowly raised the napkin. A lip print in midnight wine marked the table. See? That's a perfect match to my lips. Detective Bender studied the napkin, mirror, and tabletop. And all this means... Delia knew Detective Jameson had figured it out, but she didn't wait for him to answer. What it means is that someone got hold of a lip print of mine, off a napkin or a piece of paper or something. I blot my lips all the time. I leave papers all over the place. Delia picked up a napkin with lip print on it and tossed it down in front of Detective Bender. It means that whoever killed Vincent pressed my lip print against his cheek. It's the only reason the lip print would be reversed. Someone is trying to frame me for killing Vincent. Detective Jameson nodded to his partner. She's right, he murmured. And I think I know who did it, Delia continued, her heart pounding. Will you believe me now? Will you listen to me? We'll listen now, Detective Bender assured her. Start at the beginning. Delia took a deep breath and began to tell the detectives about Karina. 
about how she and Karina had been competing all their lives, about competing for the Conklin Award and competing for Vincent. She told them about Karina trying to strangle her, about the rat in her guitar, about her destroyed art portfolio, and about Karina knocking her unconscious and tying her up. She showed them the bruises on her wrists. Delia's eyes darted back and forth between the two men. They believe me, she decided. They believe I'm innocent. They believe I didn't kill Vincent. Detective Jameson stood up. We need to check this out, he stated. Thank you, Delia cried. Poor Karina. She's been acting so messed up. I, I won't feel safe until... Detective Jameson raised a hand. Slow down. We have to take this one step at a time. Your story is interesting, his partner added but there is no physical evidence to link this Karina to the murder. But you've given us more than enough reason to go over and talk to this girl. I want to go with you, Delia said breathlessly. I can show you where she... Jameson raised a finger to his lips. One step at a time, he repeated. One step at a time. Chapter 26 Where has the day gone, Delia wondered, stepping out of the small police station. How can it be night already? Let's get home, honey, Delia's mother said softly. She held the back door of the car open for Delia. Delia wrapped her arms around herself and watched as the two detectives pulled away from the police station in their cruiser. They didn't want her to go to Karina's house with them. We may be dealing with a murderer, Jameson had told her. We don't want to put you in danger. Delia, her mother prompted. Delia glanced back at her parents' car. I can't go home, she thought. I have to know what happens at Karina's house. Um... I think I'm going to walk over to Pretty's, Delia told her mom. She must be so worried about me. And her house is only two blocks away. Delia's father frowned. Are you sure? I don't think you should be alone. You've had an upsetting day. I'm okay, Delia assured him. I just want to talk to Pretty. I won't stay long. As her parents climbed back into their car, Delia walked toward Pretty's house. It was true Pretty lived nearby, and so did Karina. I've got to talk to Pretty, Delia told herself. But first, I have to see Karina. I have to find out if she's the killer. She ran the short distance to Karina's house. The police cruiser was already parked out in front of it. Delia stopped behind it and gazed up at the house. It stood in darkness, half hidden behind an old willow tree. The two detectives climbed the porch steps and rang the bell. A few seconds later, the porch light flashed on. Karina stepped out into the harsh yellow glare. Karina wore jeans and a sweatshirt. In the bright light of the porch, Delia could see that Karina had been crying. Delia crept closer and struggled to hear the conversation. Mom! Karina was calling. Mom! Karina's mother appeared behind her daughter. Can I help you? Ms. Fry asked. A friend of your daughter's, Vincent Milano, was killed last night, Detective Bender stated in a flat, emotionless tone. Karina uttered a loud sob. Tears filled her eyes, but she didn't begin to cry. We know, Ms. Fry answered with a sigh. I'm sure everyone in Shadyside knows the horrible news by now. We would like to talk to Karina, Bender said. Can we come inside? Karina and her mother exchanged glances. Karina said something, but Delia couldn't make out the words. Karina's mother led the detectives inside. The door closed behind them. Delia counted to ten. Then she started across the grass of the front lawn. I can't just stand here, she told herself. I have to know what's going on in there. She stopped behind the willow tree and peered toward the living room window. The traits were pulled. She couldn't see a thing. Moving quickly, Delia made her way to the side of the house. Pressing her hands against the shingles, she stepped up to the side window, leaning forward enough to see inside, and gasped, Karina, staring out at her from the center of the living room. Chapter 27 Delia pulled her head back. Too late? Was Karina already telling the detectives she had spotted Delia? Her heart pounding, Delia pressed her back against the wall and waited waited for the sound of the front door bursting open and the detectives rushing out to pull her away from the window. Silence. Carefully, she leaned toward the window again. Karina had turned to face Bender and Jameson. Whew. Delia let out a long sigh. Karina hadn't seen her after all. Holding her breath, Delia squinted through the window into the living room. Karina sat beside her mother on the couch. The two policemen sat tensely across from them in stiff-backed armchairs. Bender spoke. Then Karina. Then Bender spoke again. Jameson scribbled in his little writing pad. I wish I could hear what they are saying, Delia thought unhappily. The conversation continued for a long while. Karina balled up her hands, then unballed them. The only sign that she was the least bit tense. Suddenly, they all stood up. 
Delia watched Karina and her mother lead the way to the stairs. I have to see this, Delia told herself. I can't stand out here and miss everything. I have to know what happens. I have to. Delia knew the house so well. She had been visiting it since she was a little girl. She knew the side door led to the den, and from the den she could make her way to the back stairs. Karina's room stood at the end of the hall. Silently, holding her breath, Delia pulled open the side door and sneaked into the house. A few seconds later, she was making her way up the carpeted steps. From Karina's room, she heard low voices, drawers opening and shutting, glass bottles clinking together. She reached the hall and scurried across. She peered through the crack in Karina's door frame. Karina's huge canopy bed dominated the room. A white lace bedspread covered it, and on top of the bedspread rested a pile of pink pillows and stuffed animals. I hope the detectives aren't fooled by all the sweetness, Delia thought. I hope they realize the evil that Karina is capable of. She shifted her position slightly. Now she could see Detective Jameson searching through the clothes in Karina's closet. Delia studied Karina's face. She appeared totally in control. She calmly offered little comments to the detectives as they searched. That's my volleyball trophy, she told Detective Bender. He set it back on her dresser. Detective Jameson closed the closet and checked under the bed. He pulled out a flowered box. I like to save notes from friends. I stick them all in there, Karina explained. Is she trying to make friends with them or something? Delia thought. She's being so chatty. Karina turned to Detective Bender as he pulled open the top drawer of her dresser. You won't find anything in there, she said. Just more clothes. Detective Bender didn't reply. He flipped through each pile of clothes, then moved on to the next drawer. Miss Fry leaned wearily against the closet door. What are you looking for? she demanded impatiently. This is such a waste of your time. We agreed to cooperate, but I had no idea you were going to take Karina's room apart. I mean... Come over here, Detective Bender called to his partner. Bender was crouched down, examining the bottom dresser drawer. What is it? Jameson asked. I found something very interesting, Bender replied. Chapter 28 Delia held her breath. Karina's face turned red. She rushed over to the detectives and stared into the bottom drawer. She opened and closed her mouth. She couldn't speak. Miss Fry hurried to her daughter's side. I don't understand. No, Karina wailed. The sound ripped from her throat. No, it can't be. Those don't belong to me. Detective Bender shook his head. He stared at Karina with his sharp blue eyes. It's in your drawer. Can you explain it to us? I have to see this, Delia thought. She edged farther into the doorway. Detective Jameson reached down into the drawer and lifted out a sheet of notebook paper. He held it by one corner, touching it as little as possible. Delia took another step forward and saw a set of purple lip prints on the paper. Detective Jameson dipped into the drawer again and pulled out a tissue with a deep purple lip print on it. He pulled out print after print of Delia's lips. What can Karina say now? Delia wondered. How will she ever be able to explain this? Chapter 29 Vincent Milano had a purple lip print on his cheek when we examined his body, Detective Jameson explained to Karina and her mother. A lip print this color, this shape. But, but, Karina sputtered. We believe that Vincent's murderer placed the lip print there by pressing a sheet of paper, like one of these, against his face. Miss Fry stumbled over to Karina's bed. Her entire body shook. Karina uttered a sob. I did not kill Vincent. I cared about Vincent more than anyone in the world, and he cared about me. Delia couldn't hold herself back any longer. No, she shrieked. He didn't care about you. He didn't. And so you killed him. You killed him. The only boy I ever loved. Karina gasped and spun around to face her. Delia, what are you doing in here? She demanded. We told you to wait, Bender said angrily. The detectives started toward Delia. But before they could reach her, Karina charged across the room. She grabbed Delia around the waist and heaved her to the floor. Delia's breath rushed out in a whoosh. White specks flew in front of her eyes. Karina, stop! She could hear Miss Fry pleading. Stop! Karina let out an animal cry of fury. Delia struggled to push Karina away. The detectives grabbed Karina by the shoulders and wrestled her off Delia. With another angry shriek, Karina broke one hand free and ripped her nails across Delia's cheek. Then she spun into her mother's arms. Ah! Delia cried in pain. Her hands shot up to protect her face. She felt the hot blood flowing down her cheek. 
felt a sharp tingle of pain sweep down her body. I didn't kill him. I didn't, Karina screeched, her eyes wild, her entire body trembling out of control. I didn't. I didn't. Miss Fry wrapped her arms tightly around Karina. She whispered in Karina's ear. Karina's chest heaved with each breath. Her face glowed bright red. Calm, calm, Miss Fry whispered. We'll straighten this out. Delia kept her face covered, afraid Karina might attack again. If I let you go, will you promise not to attack Delia again? Miss Fry demanded softly. Delia lowered her hands. Karina pulled in a long, shuddering breath. Then she nodded. The detectives watched warily as Miss Fry released her. I cared about Vincent, and he cared about me, Karina cried. He did. I know he did. It's okay, dear, her mother crooned, rocking her back and forth. It's okay. It will all be okay. We need to take you and your daughter down to the station, Detective Jameson said. I advise you to call an attorney right away. Miss Fry nodded. She held on tightly to Karina. Poor Karina, Delia murmured. Then she followed the detectives down the stairs, out the front door, into the cool night. Is it over? Delia wondered, taking a deep, deep breath. Is it finally over? Chapter 30 Gabe stepped back and held the door open for Delia. It's so nice of you to suggest doing this, he said, especially tonight, on prom night. He couldn't stop staring at Delia. She wore a prom dress she designed herself, long purple satin with a high collar and a low, low back. I wanted to, Delia answered as they strolled across the parking lot. Karina and I used to be friends a long time ago. It just makes me so sad to think of her spending the night of her senior prom in a horrible place like this. Gabe opened one of the double doors leading into the shady side psychiatric hospital. Coming here always makes me feel a little queasy, he confessed. I don't know if it's the smell or... Do you visit Karina a lot? Delia asked. Yeah, once every week or so, Gabe replied. In her heels, Delia stood as tall as Gabe. She kissed him on the cheek. That's so sweet of you, she said. Gabe didn't know if it was sweet exactly, more like something he felt he should do. He kept wishing he had realized something was seriously wrong with Karina, wishing he could have done something to help her before she totally lost it, before she became so desperate she had to kill. Wait here, Gabe said. He paused at a couch near the waiting room door while Delia sat down. I'll go talk to the nurse at the registration desk. Gabe hurried over to the nurse. He felt eager to get back to Delia. He still couldn't believe that she had been going out with him for the past three weeks and he couldn't believe that Delia was his date to the shady side senior prom. We're here to visit Karina Fry, he told the nurse at the counter. The nurse checked a chart. Her doctor is with her now, but he'll be finished in a minute or two. Thanks, Gabe turned and headed back to Delia. He sat down close to her, close enough to smell her flowery perfume. We have to wait a few minutes. I don't mind. Delia snuggled closer to him. I should be happy Karina is here where she belongs, she said. At least I know she's getting the help she needs, Delia sighed, and I don't have to worry about her anymore, worry about what terrible things she'll do to me next. But school isn't the same without her. I can hardly imagine graduation without Karina there. Hey, this is our prom night, Gabe reminded her. It's going to be the best night of our lives. No time for feeling sad. He adjusted the color of his tuxedo shirt. Besides, next year you'll be away at that fancy fashion school in New York. Just think about that, Delia. The winner of the Conklin Award, loose in New York City. Delia played with Gabe's bow tie. The Conklin Award, she sighed, shaking her head. Gabe stared at her. Why do you say it that way? It's not the way I wanted to win it, Delia replied. Excuse me? A strange smile spread over Delia's face. A smile Gabe had never seen before. A knowing smile. Almost cruel. If only Karina had realized how much she already had, Delia said softly. Gabe's eyebrows rose up. Huh? What she had? She had Vincent. And she had the Conklin Award, Delia replied, still smiling. She tilted Gabe's bow tie one way, then the other. Her eyes flashed with excitement. The strange smile remained on her lips. Karina would have won, you know, she told him. She would have won them both, if I had let her. A cold shiver ran down Gabe's back. He pulled away from Delia and stared hard at her. Delia, what do you mean? he demanded. Chapter 31 What are you saying? Gabe demanded. What do you mean? You didn't let her win. I took charge, Delia said, grinning that fierce grin at him. Don't you get it? I started out with the small stuff. You know, 
jamming the rat into my guitar and smearing purple lipstick over my paintings. She shook her head. Getting that rat was so gross. I had to dig through the big garbage bin behind the school. Gabe uttered a choked cry. Delia didn't seem to notice how shocked he was. She continued her story. I could tell those little tricks wouldn't be enough. Karina was too pretty and too talented. The judges loved her, so I had to do something else, something more. Gabe wanted to jump up and run away. He suddenly couldn't stand sitting so near her, couldn't stand her cruel smile or the way her eyes flashed so gleefully, but he couldn't move. Frozen in shock, in horror, he needed to hear more. Delia's smile faded, the light in her eyes dimmed. Then I caught Vincent making out with my disgusting sister, she groaned bitterly. Yuck, just thinking about it turns my stomach. Delia stared at the floor. Suddenly feeling cold and trembly, Gabe waited for her to continue. I guess that's when I figured out what I was going to do, Delia began in a whisper. I couldn't let Vincent get away with that. I couldn't let him kiss my sister in front of me. Her voice became a growl, a furious growl. I was losing everything, everything. Vincent, my sister, the award. I saw everything slip away. She blinked. And then I suddenly knew what I had to do. I had to kill Vincent, Delia declared, almost cheerfully. I had to kill him for liking Karina better than me. And for kissing my sister. Kissing my sister. Kissing my sister. And if I could pin the blame on Karina, then all my problems would be solved. Delia pulled a tube of midnight wine lipstick out of her purse. She smoothed the fresh coat over her lips. She pulled a tissue out of the box on the table. Then she blotted her lips, leaving a deep purple lip print. Gabe couldn't stop another shiver from rushing down his back. So you... Killed Vincent the morning after the party, he choked out. No way, Delia shot back. Vincent never drove me home that night. I killed him after everyone left. I had it all planned. The evil smile returned. I was so smart, Gabe. I had it all planned. I killed Vincent, and I used a lip print on a paper just like this one to make the mark on his face. And the lip prints in Karina's dresser drawer, Gabe managed to ask. Delia laughed. I sneaked into Karina's house while she was at the party. I put them in her drawer. Delia made a pouty face. Then I had to rip my own dress. What a shame. I loved that dress. I designed it myself. Red with all those beads. She sighed. The hard part was bruising my wrists. That really hurt. But it was worth it, right? It was all worth it. She pulled her head back and gazed at him, as if seeing him for the first time. Wow, I've been talking and talking. She raised a hand to her face. What got me started? I don't know. Gabe could feel his cheeks growing hot. He knew they were bright red. He opened his mouth to speak, but no words came out. I guess I had to tell somebody, Delia continued. You look shocked, but you won't tell on me, will you, Gabe? She kissed his cheek. Gabe swallowed hard. He could picture the purple lip print on his cheek. You won't tell on me, will you? She asked in a little baby voice. Will you? She kissed his ear. She kissed his cheek, his chin, his other cheek. In the waiting room mirror, Gabe glimpsed his face, smeared with purple. She kissed him, kissed him again, kissed his forehead, his cheeks. You won't tell, will you? You won't forget what I did to Vincent, will you? Gabe stared helplessly at his reflection, at his face, smeared with thick purple stains. Will you? Will you? She continued to rub her lips over his skin. Will you, Vincent? I mean, Gabe. A sound made Gabe turn. Gazing over Delia's shoulder, he saw a white-coated doctor standing grim-faced at the doorway. I heard the whole story, the doctor told Gabe. I'll phone the police. This has been a Nightfall Audiobooks production of Killer's Kiss by R.L. Stein, a Fear Street novel, book 42. Hi, this is Chris with Nightfall Audiobooks. And that was Killer's Kiss, another Fear Street novel by R.L. Stein. I messed up the casting on this again. I haven't read this before. This is one of those where I took the name and I just ran it through Notepad++ and I spat out a bunch of numbers for Karina's name. So I gave her a regular voice like I would anybody else. Well, Karina is practically a bit part in the entire book. I thought Vincent was going to be a big character, but he wasn't. He was practically a, a bit character. The plot revolved around him and things, but he didn't really do a whole lot. Except not only double date, two girls that don't like each other, but triple date, Delia's 15-year-old sister. 
I don't care if that's consent or not. That's just gross. You're dating someone else's sister while you're dating them? No. No. That's, that's not right. Then Delia gets into a car accident because she sees Karina and Vincent kissing. And then Karina runs over and says, hey, are you okay? Oh, and by the way, Vincent has been dating us both at the same time. And Delia goes, oh, well, that's okay. He never promised exclusivity. Are you serious? So you're going to let him just date the girl that you can't stand? And I, I read this right up to the end, not knowing what was going to happen. The whole time I'm going, where's the twist? Where's the twist? So then in chapter 31, at the end of the book, Delia confesses to Gabe. And then the doctor overhears her and says, oh yeah, I'm going to call the police. Finally, because you've committed Karina to a psychiatric hospital because she's insisting she didn't kill Vincent. And she's right. She didn't kill Vincent. Delia did. Oh man, this book. It was fun to read this because I didn't know what was going to happen next. I would schedule time to sit down and record in my various studios. And by the way, this was recorded at my home studio and my primary studio. So I would schedule time to sit down to record, and then my time runs out, and I really want to know what happens next, but now I need to stop and put it aside until the next day or a few more days later until I can see how the plot advances. This was a lot of fun to do. I don't have any idea what my next book is going to be. It could be another mainline Fear Street book, the Mind Reader, Haunted, Switched, One Evil Summer. I'm really thinking about doing another super chiller, like Bad Moonlight or maybe Goodnight Kiss. There's still so much more to do. What would you like me to do next? Let me know. Drop me an email, nightfallaudiobooks at gmail.com, or leave me a comment over on my YouTube channel, Nightfall Audiobooks. It was a lot of fun doing this. I thank you very much for listening, and I will see you next time.